Well, another very warm welcome back, all my YouTube browsers and subscribers. And thanks, of course, to each and every one of you for continually returning to uh, my classic dirt bike TV channel. OK, coming up in this next video, we're going to take a look at a picture slideshow of uh, Raymond Thompson's uh, collection of old uh, motocrossers. Now, uh, Raymond has quite a few uh, bikes in his compendium of old uh, racers, so we're going to take a quick browse through his uh, collection. So without any further delay, let's just have a look at some of these uh, quite nice machines. Yes, welcome back again as we take a quick look at this uh, nice collection of old racers in Raymond Thompson's uh, workshop. Uh, Raymond, as you can gather, has uh, been a bit of a motorbike fanatic for many years, ever since he got his first uh, bike, a little DT100 Yamaha, uh, way back in 1981. And since then, he's been a collector of bikes, and uh, in his adult years, more specifically, these Micos and other uh, off-road related machines. Now he told me that uh, he initially got the bug for renovating and restoring these old uh, dirt bikes from his uncle uh, when he used to watch him uh, working on old aerials and BSAs and uh, Jawas away back in the day and Raymond would always be on hand to supply him uh, with the spanners uh, that he needed. Now it's certainly no secret that uh, he has a soft spot here for those early uh, 1980 uh, Michaels and already has a very good assortment of them here with many more awaiting rebuilding or renovation. Now his workshop, as you can see, is littered with frames and other Michael parts that he's going to use to create more uh, bikes to put back on the racetrack and it's a uh, little wonder there's a shortage of parts for these older GM Michaels because it looks like Raymond has them all here in his uh, particular workshop and you can just see a nice old uh, GM 250 there just waiting patiently for Raymond uh, to bring it uh, back to life. But of course uh, if you're going to build more uh, Michael motocrossers and you're going to need exhausts and uh, I think this collection here of uh, expansion chambers uh, will certainly be enough uh, to make a start on uh, one or two bikes. And of course if you're uh, going to rebuild more bikes then you will need uh, plastic fuel tanks and this uh, dozen or so uh, collection of uh, micro fuel tanks uh, piled up here on the shelves will soon be part of another Michael uh, restoration. And so it certainly looks like Raymond has all the basic requirements to put together a supply of bikes and these few old GM motors are just awaiting rebuild and restoration before uh, they also become uh, the power plants of brand new uh, Michael uh, motocrossers. So uh, anyhow, in order to get some better pictures of these bikes, we just about uh, managed to have enough space outside that we could have a better uh, look at uh, some of these machines and get some decent pictures. Now at the time of uh, taking these uh, photographs, which I think uh, was uh, just a few years back, I uh, counted 16 bikes in this uh, picture, which uh, didn't of course include the few half-built examples in the workshop awaiting uh, finishing. Although essentially uh, there was around 13 Michaels here with uh, two Suzukis and a lovely 1982 250 CR Husk Varna in uh, this collection. Although uh, Raymond doesn't always collect bikes, he does occasionally sell the odd one or two just in order to finance any future projects that he has uh, in the pipeline. But this particular compendium of old racers is a culmination of years of collecting and building bikes and as you'd expect uh, you just can't amass a pride of vintage irons such as this overnight. It certainly takes uh, a bit of time. Now as you've probably guessed because Raymond has a very good collection of bikes here and spare parts that he's forever being contacted from owners uh, looking for a rare part or even to buy a complete machine. And he also told me that there was a time when uh, he actually received a phone call from an unknown source who had heard about his uh, comprehensive collection of bikes 
and uh, this particular co caller wanted to buy absolutely everything he had and not just all the bikes but all the spare parts he had as well but uh, when Ray mentioned that it could amount to a substantial amount of money the uh, caller was still adamant about the sale although uh, after a lengthy conversation Raymond uh, decided not to sell and uh, held on to his prize uh, bike collection. Although when you think about it, it must be a bit of a dilemma uh, when Raymond's going to a race weekend and uh, trying to work out which actual bike uh, to take with him as uh, most owners and riders will normally have just maybe one or even two bikes to choose from so it's quite an easy uh, decision for them but to have 16 or more uh, working racers uh, it must certainly get uh, your head scratching. Although to be fair, Raymond's always on hand to lend a bike or two to any riders who need a race machine for the weekend and uh, anyhow, he actually likes uh, watching faster riders than himself put his bikes through their paces as he then uh, gets a certain amount of satisfaction knowing that he's put the bike uh, together properly. Although as I mentioned, uh, these particular pictures were taken uh, quite a few years ago and uh, since then Raymond's uh, now thinned out his herd so to speak and reduced the amount of bikes he has around his uh, workshop to make things a bit more manageable although uh, as well you know uh, when you get the bug for collecting old dirt bikes sometimes you just can't stop and uh, by my reckoning even although he's sold a few bikes since then uh, my guess is that uh, he'll still have plenty machines hanging around uh, to play with. Now at the time that I grabbed uh, these pictures of Ray's machines they were uh, then used in a feature in the VMX magazine uh, shortly after so uh, if you want to know a bit more about the background of how this collection actually came about then just uh, check out a back issue of uh, that uh, VMX magazine. But uh, nevertheless, this collection of old uh, race bikes is something I'm sure that all of my YouTubers out there could uh, only uh, dream about because as far as I'm concerned, 16 old motocross race bikes is still uh, not enough for most enthusiasts of uh, vintage racing. But uh, you have to admit, it's still a very nice selection of bikes and it must feel that uh, Christmas has come every single day, each and every time that Raymond opens up uh, that workshop door. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that uh, very quick look around Raymond Thompson's vast collection of off-roaders and uh, I do hope you'll all rejoin me soon to take another look at more vintage race bikes right here on Classic Dirt Bike TV.